Okay, I'm standing up here today because our tables are pushed so close. I want everybody to be able to see me. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. So this morning, we're just going to, we're going to talk about the anchor and how the anchor became a symbol for our faith. So how many of you have been shopping? Anchors are everywhere this year. Have you noticed that in the stores? I thought of the theme for this camp last August. So like camp had been over for about a month and I have this deal with the Lord because I'm getting on in my years. And I said, God, as long as you keep giving me the theme for a camp, I'll just keep doing camp. But if you don't give me a theme, then I'll know that I'm, I'm done for. And so he, in August, so like camp hadn't even been over for a whole month and I already felt like he said, next year anchored. And so I had the theme anchored and then this spring I started going to the stores and there were anchors everywhere. So I'm thinking everybody, because I didn't tell that many people, and then I put out the pamphlet thing about camp, and I thought everybody thinks that she just picked anchored because there's anchors at Target, there's anchors at TJ Maxx, there's anchors at Old Navy, but there's always anchors at Old Navy, and there's anchors everywhere, the general store, everywhere I went, I was going crazy. Hobby Lobby had tons of anchor stuff, Michael's anchor stuff, and I thought, they are all copying me. <laughs> it's not fair. They're all copying me. So, but I was excited because it made getting ready so much fun for the anchor. But then I got excited because all of those people don't realize the significance of the anchor and how important it is in our faith. We know that who is the anchor? God. Jesus is our anchor. He's the anchor of our faith. But how did that get to be a symbol that's connected with Christianity? When we think of our faith, what most often do people think of as a symbol for being Christian? The cross, right. And sometimes the fish or the ichthys, which is the Greek name. The ichthys, which is that little fish. I'm trying to draw it backwards. That goes like that, you know, with the little tail thingy like this. And so that's what most people think of. But way, way, way back, like right after Jesus died, the symbol that was most common was the anchor, not the cross. Wasn't the cross. In fact, it didn't become the cross for years. So I was wondering why. So I did some reading to find out. And the anchor became a symbol during the period of Roman persecution, that's when the Romans didn't like that people were becoming Christians. And they started finding Christians and they would put them in jail. They would throw them to lions. And the lions did not become their pets. The lions ate them. So they'd throw them to lions. They would do bad things to some of the early Christians. They would tie them to a pole and light them on fire. Bad things happen. So that's what persecution is, bad things. People that believed in Jesus really had to stand up for their faith. And so people didn't want other people to know that they were Christians. And so they had to find something that was more secret. And so the people would get together with their Christian brothers and sisters and they would hold special meetings, but they would go to underground caves, they would go to underground tunnels, they would even go to what are called the catacombs, which are tombs where people are buried underground because people didn't want to go hang out in the catacombs. And so, because nobody wanted to hang out there, because that's where they buried dead people, that's where Christians would gather and they would talk about Jesus and worship the Lord. I don't really want this on right now. Walkie-talkie. Mm -mm. And so, they were also being crucified. So the symbol of the anchor was very encouraging 
to people because it made them, they realized the anchor was what held ships safe in storms or held ships steady when they came into port. And so they, they attached some meaning to that and then it wasn't something that everybody else knew was attached to their faith. Hebrews 6.19 is the anchor scripture. It says, we have hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secures. So oftentimes anchors were on people's tombstones or on their markings for after people died, they would use that. The anchor was a symbol for a royal king named Seleucus, and he used the anchor. Do you know why he liked the anchor so much and used it as a symbol? Because he had a birthmark that was in the shape of an anchor. And because he had a birthmark that was in the shape of an anchor, he thought, let's use that as a symbol. And so that's how it started getting used. The Jews living in the empire at the time liked the anchor and they used it as a symbol on their coins. It got phased out. That means at about 100 years before Jesus was born, they didn't start, they, the anchor kind of was no longer seen in existence as a symbol. Like the Jewish people, it dropped off. They didn't use it on their coins anymore. So why didn't they use the cross? Why do you think they didn't use the cross? Why did they not use the cross for a symbol? Anybody know? Ayana? Okay, that's good. What else do you think? Uh, Asher? Okay, that's another reason. Who were the people that were getting crucified on the cross? Were they good people? Most of the people that were getting crucified before the Christians started getting crucified, they were crucifying criminals on the cross. And so for most people, when they would see a cross... That symbolized a criminal because criminals were the ones that were getting crucified. So in people's minds, it had that negative connotation of crucifixion. And so that's why the church or the Christian faith didn't choose that at first. One, it was obvious. Two, it was because it symbolized criminals that got crucified. And that was part of the humiliation for Jesus was that he had to die on the cross like a criminal. Was he a criminal? No. If he never sinned, could he have been a criminal? No. no. But they chose to put him to death that way. And look at the anchor. There's one up here behind you. What do you see in the anchor? There's a cross, isn't there? There's a cross piece in the anchor. So do you see how they could still have a cross, but it's disguised in the anchor? Very good. Then when Constantine, you guys are getting a little history lesson here. Constantine became a conquering um, person. He was going out and conquering all these different civilizations and countries and nations. And he took the cross as his symbol. And so when he would take over and when he would go on his crusades, he would have the cross. Unfortunately, that actually made it have a negative connotation because it, he was a very like blah, taking over lots of territory and he would have the cross and they did do bad things to people. And so then that's been something for Christians to have to overcome is the bad feelings that people have from what took place during the crusades. So this morning, we're going to have some fun, and we're going to do an activity as cabins, and we're going to come up with, have you guys, do you know what an acrostic is? That's when you take the letters that spell a word, and then you make other words off of them. So for example, if I had the word flower, and I wanted to make an acrostic, I would take 
try to think of a word that started with an F and an L and an O and a W and a and a good spellers out there. And so, but do I want the words to be all kind of hodgepodge and crazy like fudge, ogre, oh fudge, uh, limbo, ogre, wawoo. Do I want them to be all weird? No, I want them to make something that's going to flow together to give a message. So I could say, flower, forever love, overflowing with eternal rewards. Do you see here? How, so that's each one of the letters. Forever, L, love, overflowing with eternal rewards. And that spells flower at the beginning. So we're going to do this as cabins. I'm going to have you get together and you're going to think of something for guess which word? Anchor. We're going to come up with, so, and it needs to, now when I said it needs to fit together, I want it to fit together in a Christian theme. All right. I don't want you coming up with a, a football chant or a Minecraft strategy. I want you to come up with something that flows with a Christian theme for each of the letters of anchor. All right, so you're going to work together. And the way I suggest is I'm going to give you two pieces of paper. One page just has the letters. Excuse me. Goat. You got some boys over there chatting. Got some, I'm going to give you one page that just has the letters and then just blank space. So a great thing to think of to start with is let's just think of a bunch of words that would start with A. A bunch of words that would start with N. And then you start weaving it together to come up with your acrostic, all right? Then what you need to do is once you come up with that, the whole cabin shh, needs to memorize it. Because not today, but some other time during camp, we're going to have a presentation time where you're going to say it all together as a cabin. All right? And just to put an other layer of fun to it, once you get your thing figured out, I'm going to come by in each cabin. I have 13 different anchor prints. So I told you anchors were everywhere. Shh. Anchor prints of fabric. I just pulled this one out. There's a yard of fabric. So with this, you need to incorporate your fabric into your acrostic presentation. Headbands, armbands, backdrops, whales, I don't know, whatever you want. So you're going to get a yard of fabric. You'll get a, um, some scissors, one set of scissors, and you'll get your worksheets to do your page. All right, does everybody understand, counselors? You understand? All right, so 